Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM Beta series, A Top Hat with me, Daniel. We're managing my beloved Luton Town and trying to help them survive in a championship. After back-to-back -back successive promotions in recent years, we're trying to keep them up on a shoestring budget. We start on the profile of Harry Cornick as to not give anything away. Probably our standout performer so far this year, two goals in six appearances. And when you see that he's three and a half star ability, it probably shows you why we're amongst the favourites to go down. No disrespect for him, he's done really well and he's a fairly decent young player, but he's certainly not top championship standard and he's one of our key first 11 players. Today in episode 3 we face Hull City in the championship and it's a relegation 6 pointer even this early on in the season. If we go and have a look at the league table, we're second bottom on 5 points and Hull just above us with a slightly better goal difference but on the same number of points after 7 matches. So we're trying to come back earlier in case we get the sack, I'm not sure we're going to see out the season at this rate we really are struggling and our manager performance has dropped below a C now at C minus and they're a little bit disappointed just one victory so far this season in the league and we really struggled in that game as well so I don't hold too much hope at the moment I feel like we're fighting a losing battle but before we go and have a look at our transfers a couple more that have come into the club and play this game against Hull a massive thank you to everyone that supported the series so far and watched either of the first two episodes and those of you that are following the one club story as well I really do appreciate your support if you haven't seen any of them yet or you're not up to date with both series then do click on the eye above to catch up with a playlist and if you're enjoying the series even if it's seeing a struggle please do put a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content which will continue long term on the channel but today we've got a look at our transfers probably the only positive going into this game a couple of players that have come into the club and one or two that we've let go as well so we were quite active late on in the window, another player leaving permanently, George Moncur going to Aberdeen for 400 grand, off to Scotland he became a backup player and it just seemed like we needed to get the money in. We had two players go out on loan and he sort of reminded me why I don't manage my favourite club in FM, I've had to let one of my favourites in real life go, that man is Andrew Shinney, only rated 3 star ability in this side and he's gone off to Colorado in the MLS, thankfully they're paying most of his wages. And then Lloyd Jones, our fifth choice centre half we spent most of the summer trying to loan him out and Bristol Rovers have come in and paid all of his wages so hopefully he'll develop while he's there and maybe he'll come back a half decent player but as you can see we spent a little bit of money 500 grand on an unconventional sign in and we managed to get two more loan players in both of them fairly reputable names so first is John Lundstrom of course we were negotiating with him at the end of the last episode a player that's been starring for Sheffield United in the Premier League in real life he scored one goal for us already and made five appearances and he looks a fairly decent solid player four star ability four star potential and he's been one of our shining lights in recent weeks then next is Gonzalo Villa here's the sign in for half a million pound from El Che in the Spanish second division a 21 year old three and a half star ability five star potential he's the reason Andrew Shinney and George Moncur are off he's a really good young central midfielder and has got plenty of ability as a playmaker Bear with me as I've just changed a couple of the tabs in the bottom right, but this guy is improving off the pitch. Had a bit of a slow start in the country, getting caught on possession a little bit, but he is going to become a fairly decent player and he's someone we'll get a return investment on. And then Callum O'Dowd are the last one. He came in on deadline day on loan from Bristol City. A 24-year-old Irish international, four-star ability, four-star potential, and again, he's been one of our strongest performers so far. So here's someone who could have the ability to keep us up, but even so, he's not a wonderful player and the fact he's coming on loan from other championship clubs shows how much weaker we are than them but overall we did a bit more business than I expected not that this managed to help us out much the dynamics are really poor across the board the managerial support's improving but he's not going up quick enough Elliot Lee's unhappy that we've let George Moncur go because they're very good friends off the pitch but the dressing room atmosphere is now up to average and that's surprising based on recent results so if we go and have a look at the schedule just so you can see what's happened since the last episode there's one clear standout which is a 6-2 defeat against West Brom and we'll get to that in the other games in a moment but it all started pretty swimmingly to be honest that two all draw against Middlesbrough a really entertaining game in the last episode and then a one all draw followed away at Cardiff City the recent relegated side having a tough time breaking us down Harry Cornick got the goal in that one really did play well actually and then at home to Northampton in the Carabao Cup Callum McManaman stepped in with a late goal but we dominated 
dominated the match from start to finish and thoroughly deserved our victory. The West Brom game was a little bit of a learning curve for us. Lundstrom scored a brilliant goal actually, but then Charlie Austin cut us to the sword at the end. We went all out attacker chasing the game and unfortunately it cost us dearly. What I did want to do actually, going back to the Cardiff game, is just show you the assist for Cornick's goal. If we go into it, it's a ridiculous bit of skill and something I've not seen on FM before. So it comes out to Loire Loire on the left hand side and just watch out for his cross here. Gets to the byline, pulls out the Rabona and it goes to Cornick perfectly at the back stick and he manages to give us the lead. So a Rabona assist from Kazenga Loire Loire, something we can be very proud of. Then unfortunately the goals dried up for us. Sheffield Wednesday away, we lost one nil the same scoreline then at Barnsley a club we obviously managed in the head coach last year a team that served us well in FM19 then we faced Cardiff again in the second round of the Carabao Cup just as Luton did in real life unfortunately the result wasn't quite the same though Nelson and Hoylett were the first half goals for Cardiff then our only victory came against Huddersfield Callum O'Dowder with a winner but Huddersfield in the second half had enough chances to win three games and I've no idea quite how they lost it then after the international break back to of defeats. This one was a 2-0 one at Queen's Park Rangers who looked comfortable from start to finish. Incidentally, both of the 1-0 defeats followed a pattern of real life. Simon Sluger throwing the ball in the net. Unfortunately, he cost us both of those games, and that's the reason he's out the side in real life, and probably not far behind that in this one. But for us, this is a massive relegation six-pointer, even at this early stage of the season, so it's going to be crucial that we can get some sort of result, just to build a little bit of confidence in the club. Grant McCann struggling, and only 8,500 fans expected. That's a little bit disingenuous towards Luton fans. We've had a sell out in every single game this season despite being in a relegation fight in real life but it's poor form for both sides inconsistent if nothing else for Hull and we've got Brendan Galloway in at left back today as unfortunately Potts isn't quite recovered from injury but you will get to see a few of the new signings in action as well as Harry Cornick who started the season well we're still waiting for a first goal for both Fizzy Brown and James Collins both of whom have been struggling dearly and we have made a number of tweaks to some of our tactical instructions just to try and make us a little bit more solid. So in goal we've got Simon Sluger as the sweeper keeper. He's still rated as one of the best players at the club. And in Craney and Galloway the fullbacks with Worrell and Bradley at centre half. Lundstrom and Villa the new central midfield partnership. Cornick O'Dowder and Brownie attacking three. And then James Collins on his own up front. We've adjusted him to become a target man. So let's go and get into this game against Hull. A massive game in the context of the season. A win would take us out the relegation zone and that could be crucial at this very early stage. Well, a 4-3-3 for Hull, and it's the two wingers we've got to look out for. Grzycki and Jared Bowen, both excellent players. Bowen was linked with a £17.5 million move away. He's an absolutely sensational player. West Ham linked with him in January. A homegrown player at Hull City, and what a fantastic pro he's become. Grzycki on the other side isn't far off him. Now 31, but still a very good player. And they're the two that could take Hull up the league, that the rest of the side perhaps isn't the strongest. But either way, it's going to be a very tough test for us. We're winning in the fullback areas and that could pay dividends for Hull. Unfortunately we're still the underdogs despite being at home against a relegation rival. So we're going to encourage the lads to go out there and do what they do best and just hope they put in a satisfactory performance. We want to compete and make the games close even if we're not going to survive ultimately. And regarding the thought of going on for further seasons it is probably going to depend on how this year goes. At the moment it looks like we could be sacked before the end and we're almost certainly going to be relegated. I'd love the chance to bring my club back up when the likes of Izzy Brown have got off the wage bill but of course that could be the board's decision they may not want to keep us if we go down if we do stay up I really think we could do well next year that we do need the club to help us out as Collins forces a brilliant save from George Long but unfortunately Brown was offside in a build up 15 gone though it's been a pretty even game neither side able to create anything it's Pennington at the back for Hull though as they try to build for the first time Burke plays a 1-2 with a centre half it's Long over the top and Garcia's in just like that what on earth has gone on there? Garcia with a brilliant dink finish over Sluga, but one straight ball over the top beats the whole team, and again we've shown our frailty at the back. We're just not good enough across the board really, and we're a league one side playing in the championship. 20 gone and we trail 1-0, the only shot in target of the game has beaten us. It's Elder with a throw on the left for Hull though. Henriksen loses out in the air to Craney, but it only falls for a Hull player again. Garcia with acres of space in the box, we're all over the place defensively, we're at 6 
and sevens as people are marked. Grzycki eventually challenged and the ball goes into Garcia with an unopposed header. Joe Worrell getting there a little too late. Sluger holds it as it was straight at him but the warning signs are there for us again. Well, there's a couple of nervous and anxious players on the pitch as we've demanded a little bit more from the lads, but unfortunately we've received absolutely no response and we've still only managed one shot on target. It's Grzycki, the dangerous winger, to Lassen. He's got two men out on the left if he can find them, goes to Henriksen instead who switches it, and now Burt's coming forward on the right. He's got Jared Bowen in support and he finds him very quickly, just goes back for a simple one-two, and not closing Bowen down could be a regret as Irving has a shot blocked. He's back to Henriksen 30 yards out. No pressure on the ball at all. All. We've got the pressing intensity high and the lads just aren't putting much effort into it at all. It seems like we haven't got the support and we're losing the dressing room and this performance has been pretty feeble. We're on extensive highlights and we've seen nothing going forward and at half time we trail 1-0 to Garcia's goal. I just don't know what more we can do. We have to tell them we're disappointed in almost every single game. Some of them don't react, they haven't got any respect for us yet, and coming in with that lower reputation has really harmed us in this series. We just cannot handle it, the players haven't respected us from the start, and it's a real good group of lads on back-to-back -back promotions, and they've just got nothing for us at all. So I'm trying to think of what changes we can make, and I think I'm going to go to a positive mentality. We'll get into the second half and try and keep the ball better, and hopefully create a few chances with it. It's Pennington the centre half for Hull. Long ball forward only finds Worrell. Lundstrom brings it down and plays a 1-2 with him. But Worrell's hoofed it straight at the centre forward. Awful play by the defender. And we look at sixes and sevens in this match. This could be any score Hull want it to be. And it's almost certain we're going to get relegated. Let me know who you want me to manage when I get sacked. Because I'm sure it's not going to be a million miles away. Bowen's in behind. Again we've let him through one on one. Bowen chips it in and hits the bar. Worrell hacks away. It's out for a throw in. And we look so weak in defensive areas. An hour on the clock, there's been no change at all, so I'm going to take off some of the frustrated and anxious players. Cornick replaced by McManaman on the right. Lundstrom's had a poor game, so Penny Ruddock's on for him. Two changes main, and we'll see if they'll make a difference. I don't think they're going to the way we're currently playing. 20 minutes left, we've seen nothing going forward again, though Villar's picked the ball up in the holding role. He switches it to Craney. Oh, what a goal that is! Martin Craney with an absolute thunderbolt. The former Sheffield United man from 25 yards has got a 5 rating for long shots but that one flew into the top corner. A brilliant finish and we're back in with a sniff. Now can we go on and get the winner? It's Callum O'Dowda looking nervous on the left as Hull are back going forward again. O'Dowda wins it and can he break here? A little tug of a shirt there but O'Dowda keeps coming forward with a ball and lays it off with a 1-2 to Galloway. Back to Izzy Brown in the number 10 position. He finds the sub Pelly Ruddock. He keeps possession and finds Villar the playmaker. He goes wide to O'Dowda. Back to the centre half Bradley. All the way through for Odalder again. He's in and shoots and it's a brilliant save from Long and we could have completed the turnaround there. A brilliant comeback and we're really looking like winning it now and Villar's got a chance with a corner. So the back post, it beats everyone. Collins gets there and keeps it in and he's just got to hold it up and wait for support which eventually comes from Joe Worrell. He's been challenged. It's out for a throw but it's all Luton Town with 15 to go. We're going to go and make our final change. Odalder's looking a little bit nervous. So the man with plenty of flair Kalunga Lualua comes on. Hopefully he'll be able to produce a moment of magic. Just over 10 minutes remaining at Kenilworth Road and we really need to sneak these three points. We're back with McManaman, a free kick on the edge, good effort into the arms are long. It was forced to stretch but he managed to hold it and although we're dominating this second half, we've not been able to find that winner. It's Craney at right back with a throw into Brown. Plays a 1-2 back to Craney, the man who scored that wonderful goal of course, to give us that little bit of hope. Burke heads it away to Bowen though, falls for Stewart in midfield and they've still got this brilliant threat on the counter attack that Bowen's forced all the way back to the keeper. Long ball forward finds Henriksen, Lassen out to the left back elder and now Hullaf finally coming forward again and are they going to create something special from here we know that it only takes one chance against our defence which has been ridiculously poor all season Galloway out muscled by Bowen into Grzycki at the back stick but his head is feeble and he's straight a sluger thankfully we survive at one all the lads are nervous and I don't know why they're on top at the moment here but even just the thought of getting a point and the lads get a little bit worried McManaman's lost the ball on the edge of the box falls for Stewart and now Ramsey long ball from Hull and they've got in again but 
thankfully the flick on only finds Craney. He can start again, but he goes into Villa. Good ball coming forward to the centre circle, and Panzu gets it out to the right. Long ball through, and it deflects to Elder. He eventually hoofs it clear for Hull. Out to Bowen on the right-hand side. Coming forward and shoots. From miles out, it was an optimistic effort, and in the end it goes comfortably wide. We're going to encourage the lads with three or four minutes left, and hopefully some of them won't be nervous anymore. It's Craney with a throw and an attacking right-hand side. Up to Pelly Rudder can Panzu. Falls for Villa on the edge. His shot's blocked. I think it hit Collins' his own man. He's eventually out for a throw in. And was that our final chance? One more minute of normal time to go. Craney into Pelly Ruddock. Crosses for Luar Luar. And he puts it in the back of the net. We're 2-1 up with one minute left. And there's the back trip from Luar Luar. Possibly more of a cartwheel. But we might have nicked a late winner. Into stoppage time. We'll just see out the highlight. And then we'll go and set our tactical instructions. We want to time waste and see as much of it off the pitch, although Izzy Brown's just lost it in the number 10 role. Lassen out to Grzycki on the right. Great effort from distance. Sluger tips it over. It's a brilliant save. And now we've got to defend the corner. We're going to reduce the tempo. Time waste all the time. In transition, we'll slow the pace down. There is absolutely no need for us to go attacking here. We just want to take as long as possible. We're going to drop our line of engagement. No need for us to push too far forward. And we're not going to prevent short goalkeeper distribution. We don't need to press them all the way back there. So we're going to get back into the game in stoppage time and hopefully we'll see off this corner comfortably. It's a cross from Garcia. Worrell heads away strongly. Henriksen gets it 25 yards out though. Switches it back out to the corner taker. He's got time on the right. Into Stewart who tries to shoot. It's blocked to Izzy Brown. His ball through is poor to Collins. But eventually it's out for a throw in. Two more minutes of stoppage time to go. We're going to put our fullbacks onto a defensive duty. Loire Loire will drop to a support as well. The man who could be the heroic match winner. Just one more minute of stoppage time and it's a corner or a free kick for Hull, sorry. I'm losing the words but it's headed over the bar and surely that one's going to be it. Blow the whistle referee, we could have a famous victory and we do. What a second half performance. We were awful in the first half but got the ascendancy after the break. We went all out attack and it seemed to work very well for us. So at home we've got to try and control the games a bit more. Of course we were assisted by a thunderbolt from Craney. That isn't going to happen every match I presume but Luar Luar pop up with a winner. So a crucial win in a relegation six-pointer and that should take us out the bottom three. We're going to tell the lads they did well. Hopefully their morale will improve as a result. We just need to get that winning mentality back and get enough points to stay out of the bottom three. Well, with my voice cracking under the excitement, we're back to see the FA Cup results. And we win 2-1. There's the confirmation. A brilliant goal from Martin Craney. And Luar Luar off the bench with another moment of magic. We saw one that he produced off camera earlier in the episode. And now he's managed to hit the finishing touch on one. So a wonderful day at the office. And it certainly didn't look like it at half time. But I can't be more proud of that performance. We just haven't got the ability to compete at this level. So we need to graft out a few victories like that. If you consider that Hull are probably going to lose their best player in January, that really does bode well for us moving forward. And we move on to the point a game ratio, what we're looking for at the end of the year. We've got eight points after eight matches, and we're now one clear of the relegation zone. Just trying to get that gap to Barnsley and Hull, and then it's one from the rest of the pack. But the likes of Charlton had a pretty good start, and they're starting to fall away now. And there's some of the usual suspects down there, Wigan and Millwall starting to drop down the table. But a brilliant result, and a fantastic performance in the second half. I really am proud of the lads for that one. And if we go to the squad, you can see how much it meant to them. The morale is really starting to lift. The dressing room atmosphere's improved. The managerial support's gone down remarkably. But either way, it's a fantastic result and certainly has cheered up my mood. So maybe the sack's a little bit further away for now and we'll be able to get the board back on side. We'll finish on that screen so you can see the manager performance. We go back up to a C rating now. So we're doing a satisfactory job at this point and that's all we need to be doing this season. If we look at the schedule to see when we might next be back, I want to try and leave it a month or so. There's a big game against Leeds in mid-November and I think that's the one I want to show next. One of the biggest sides in the championships, a massive managerial mastermind in the opposite dugout, presuming Bielsa's still there then. And of course they're going to be one of the favourites for promotion, so it's going to be a tough test at Kenilworth Road.
Our next home game's a crucial one against Millwall as well. That one I hope we can get a victory off camera. Another one of those six pointers to contend with. And then Charlton just after the Leeds game too. That's going to be another decisive moment. But if you did enjoy this episode and that brilliant comeback against Hull, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of the performance. Do I need to be braver and go more controlling at home? Maybe the lads take on that responsibility and they just want to have the football most of the time. We still look extremely vulnerable vulnerable at the back but there's not much I can do about that with an average defence. We've got a lot of new signings back there and some players who aren't quite good enough for this level but I haven't got the finances to replace them. Start to let me know in the comments what you think we should do in January, which areas we think we need to improve and of course we'll try and get to that point still in contention. Odd little wins like that will certainly help us on the way. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content, five episodes a week from our long term story. That one's with Dorkin Wanderers as we try and take them from the lowest playable league to the top of English and European football. We'll also have two episodes a week from this one, meaning seven videos a week from Football Manager on the channel, more than we've ever had in the past, and I hope you continue to enjoy it. But a massive thanks for watching this one, and you'll continue to port of the series as always. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time for another crucial episode as we try to stay above that championship relegation line.